And thank you very much for joining us here on PM Express. And as you see, the lights just came on, and it came on for the NDC as well today. After speculation, months of anticipation, finally, we get to uh, know the identity of the woman who is going to be John Muhammad's running mate for the December 7 election. There's a lot to go through for you tonight. You've heard a lot. But trust me, you haven't heard anything yet compared to what you're about to hear from my guests tonight here on PM Express. I want to quickly uh, bring you the details as far as what we know uh, from the uh, appointment of Jainana Pokwajiman is concerned as the running mate to John Dramani Mahama. So I want to quickly go through for you. So this is the face, the smiling face of a woman who must partner John Mahama to deliver victory on December 7. And of course, she's going to become the running mate. It's a key question of who should deliver the votes, helping his, uh, his flag bearer, her flag bearer. So what do we know about her? And this is for many NDC stalwarts, her trump card, her competence. They talk about lecture of the University of Cape Coast since 1986. They talk about vice chancellor, University of Cape Coast. And there's, a, there's history in that because she was the first female vice chancellor of a public university. And that is a major one. Now, 2013 to 2017, she was the education minister. She was left on tap at the ministry. Well, those who know her say, John Mahama left her there because she was competent. Okay, we'll get into that. Now, held various academic positions as well, including head of the Department of English at the University of Cape Coast. Her words uh, in, in many publications that we've seen excellent stuff indeed um was one of the five scholars to deliver presentations for the 2200th anniversary of the abolition of slavery at the u.n headquarters new york she celebrated the world war in fact and she's a, a recipient of of uh, many awards now holds a master's and doctorate degree uh, in english and french from york university in toronto and ontario canada um, she, she's a B at Hans in English and French, University of Cape Coast as well. And so she, she led uh, in a university um, where we know they, she eventually also got, got her own um, uh, awards from. There are many questions to ask tonight. We are learning a bit more about her and her affiliation to the NDC. Um, it will surprise you maybe to know that she's only been a member of the NDC for seven years. She became a member in 2013 when she was asked a question about this, um, when she was appointed back then, whether she's a member of the NDC. She said she's not a member of the NDC. At the time, she was appointed the uh, education minister. Subsequently, she took up a card and became an official member. She's been since. Question is, is seven years enough to win your way into the hearts of the rank and file, the foot soldiers, the grassroots of the party is a big unknown. Tonight we'll get into those, we'll get into those uh, interesting questions with those who know her politically, academically and her service to this country as well. Stay with me here on PM Express after the break. And thank you for staying with me here on uh, PM Express. It's an exciting day if you're a member of the NDC. Uh, I want to bring in a, a leading member of the party. Is he is in John Mahama's campaign team playing a very important role there. Alex Sebefia, NDC Deputy Campaign Manager, uh, Director of International Relations, a member of the Functional Executive Committee. Uh, Mr. Sebefia, always a pleasure to have you on PM Express. Uh, I can see the broad smile on your face on my television, uh, I don't know if it's a smile because of Jay Nan or Pukwajiman or already dreaming of uh, being sworn in uh, on December 7, but now that you've completed your ticket. I'll come to that very shortly. Uh, Samo Kujitu Ablakwa is a former uh, Deputy Education Minister, uh, MP for North Tong, will connect uh, with us via Zoom. We need him to join us because he, he served as uh, the Prof's Deputy 
for a long time, knows her inside out, very curious to hear his thoughts. I've heard him already speak tonight, um, deep knowledge of, of a woman who tonight is the NDC's uh, running mate, running mate to John Dramani Mahama. Uh, I'm also delighted, as I told you already today, uh, that we'll be analyzing the woman. Um, we'll, we'll, have the, we'll, we'll hear from the politics, we'll hear about the, her, her, her competence at ground game, but what about her as a person, as a lecturer, as an academic, somebody who knows her well will join us. Professor uh, Sarah Dakwa, Professor of Food Science, University of Cape Coast. That's a university where Professor Jane uh, Nanopoku Ajiman was the vice chancellor, first female vice chancellor of a public university. And then, of course, we will hear from the MPP. They've held a press conference today. What's that all about? This is NDC's day. What ha has it got to do with the MPP? We'll hear from uh, John Budu, the MPP General Secretary, who will join us on the phone. There's only one place to start this. Mr. Sebefia, um, a Deputy Campaign Manager. Um, this came as a surprise to many of us. It wasn't a surprise why? to you, obviously. I, mean, I heard you say why, but you know, in the list of names that came up, um, nobody thought that she was top of the list. And so you pull the fast one on all of us. I'm sure that gives you great pleasure. Well, I, I first and foremost, can I say good evening to you, Evan? It's always a pleasure being on your show. And good evening to my colleagues uh, or my seniors, in, in the case of uh, Miss or Mrs. Dakwa, as well as Sami and obviously uh, 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 John, John Wedu. Um, but more importantly, good evening to all your viewers and listeners. Can I start off by saying that this is actually uh, a fantastic day, this 6th of July, uh, 2020, and it's a historic day as well, because the NDC has made history in choosing a formidable, fantastic personality in the form of Professor uh, Nana, Nana Jane uh, Ajiman uh, for the position of vice as a vice presidential candidate. And actually, in my humble opinion, she will become the first vice, female vice president in the Republic of uh, Ghana. Um, I have absolutely no doubt. I think the choice was uh, perfect. It's a fantastic choice. And it opens up a whole myriad of opportunities, not just for the NDC, but for Ghana as a country. Um, I don't know whether you want me to go into some of the reasons why at this stage or you want me to... So, so no, no, I, mean, I need to, to ask you that fundamental question. Yeah. Why? Well, why, yeah. why did you settle? Why did you settle on Jane? What, what, what is it that tilted the scales in her favor? The NDC has a plethora of people who could have filled that position. And many of them had shown or demonstrated interest in actually becoming the running mate to His Excellency. However, one of the things or a part of the reason why I think she was chosen is because actually she brings a totally different face to the politics of Ghana. If you go around and you speak to many people nowadays, what they tell you is that politicians hold the state. And they also tend to intimate that there is no difference, say, between the NDC and the MPP for some people. And I personally think that the politics of Ghana is going down the drain in terms of the kind of politics we are dealing with and how we perform. To bring in somebody like Professor Opoku Ajiman, it changes the dynamics and it gives hope to a whole plethora of people that look, Notwithstanding what is happening, there's a hope that we are now going to shift the type of politics that has been played over years into a different form of politics. Mm -hmm. Politics of truth, politics of standing up for what is right, politics of thinking of people's welfare and putting them at the forefront. And they, they just, those attributes just go to reinforce the personality of the flag bearer himself, but it gives it an extra boost when you pick a personality like Professor Nana Jane Opoko Ajiman. So for me, that is one of the biggest issues. Her integrity is unquestionable. 
She is completely competent. She is clearly somebody who delivers. And at the, with all these things, she's a fantastic, pleasant human being. So when you put all these things together, I have the smile on my face because it has made the job of my boss, Professor Alabia's campaign coordinator, and me as a lot, lot easier in terms of how we move forward to market the NDC as the next choice for Ghana. Now, you, you make a, a few important points, and let, let's, let's try and unpack them. Let's start with that, and I've heard all since she was appointed, a lot of the NDC stalwarts say, Trump card is, she brings something different, uh, refreshing, you, you're changing the way politics is done uh, because of the competence, et cetera, et cetera. But in our, in our fourth Republican constitutional history, we've seen her likes before as running mates. Um, in your own party, uh, Professor John Evans at Mills is a classic example, right? Um, in, the end, in the MPP's own history, um, Dr. Baumia in 2008 came on the scene, same story was told <laughs> us how he, he is not a die in a wool politician is going to come and sort of t give us something different. But something interesting happened to these Please. two. Please, there's uh -huh. no comparison. Okay, no, no I'll, I'll come if back. You talk, if you talk about Professor no, Mills, no. Yes. I'm with you. Okay. Because, and you have to accept they, they came from that academic. Professor Mills. Tr trust Sorry. me, uh, trust me, Mr. Gwefi, I'll come to the Baromia question, because I know that one is one of those that is very, con I'll come to that separately. But my question I was going to ask is, historically, if you look at these two, Professor Mills, when he stood by himself, lost two elections, in spite of the fantastic things that you say about Jane that apply to him, right? He lost two elections. Now, Dr. Barmia also came from a background of being um, an economist, also partnering Nanado, lost two elections. Some look at that and say, those are terrible, ominous signs for Jane Nano Pukwajiman. Do you agree? Absolutely no. I mean, the comparison is wrong. Um, I don't think that there is any comparison whatsoever in the previous elections and what happened. In 2000, when Professor Mills lost, and in 2004, when he lost, there were different dynamics happening within our party. So finally, he won in 2008. And in 2012 to two, uh, 2008 and 2012, when Bahumia lost, there were different dynamics happening mm -hmm. with regard to the MPP party and also the NDC. But the comparison of Nana Jane and uh, Dr. Bahumia is for me, there is no way that the kind of statements that Dr. Bahumia makes, you would ever get Professor Nana Opoku Ajiman making, and not even possibly apologizing even if she made the wrong statement for it later. And let me just, I don't want to go into the deep politics, but if someone said, look, there's, I've been a governor of the Bank of Ghana before, and therefore Ghana doesn't need to borrow any money. All the money is here in Ghana. And then subsequently, your government ends up borrowing the most money ever. Okay. At the very least, apologize to us and say, look, I got it wrong. You will not be the first person to have got it wrong, but you always try to justify. How can you compare such a person or such a, a, a personality with uh, because she's also been in government for four years as the Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear more from Sami about the kind of work ethic and from also from uh, Mrs. Darkwa, the kind of work ethic, the kind of person that she is. The comparison for me, based on where we are with uh, Dr. Baumia and where she's coming from, are totally, they are two different people. And Dr. Baumia is not our yardstick, by the way. <laughs> if, no. if, if we made him our yardstick, we would be looking at uh, a, a different type of animal. And we have to move from that type of politics. The politics of not being able to say what you mean and mean what you say. That is the kind of person that we are bringing to the tickets. Okay. And so for me, I'm very clear in my mind, she is not the flag bearer. The flag bearer is President John Dramani Mahama, mm. former. And she's coming to compliment him. Yeah. That is different from Professor Mills running as a running as a presidential candidate. Dr. Baumi has never run as a running as a as a flag bearer before. So he compliments. And even as complimentary, he lost. Uh, John President John Rathamans didn't run, didn't lose when he was a vice presidential candidate. 
So there are two different roles you are trying to compare, and they actually require two different things. So that comparison as well doesn't fit. Okay, let, 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 but, me, bring, let, let, me, let me bring in Sami, if you may. He just joined. Sure. I want to bring in Sami, and I'll come to Prof shortly. So that Prof, I want to isolate Prof because um, I want her to come in just purely based on her knowledge of the woman as an academic. And so I'll, I'll bring her in shortly once I hear from you politicians. Let me bring in something. I mean, someone could you talk black one. So let's drill down to why Iranian mate is important. Some say the only reason why the Iranian mate, and I've heard Mr. Sagbefia make that point eloquently. Some wanted to compliment the main face on the ballot, but with the ultimate objective of winning you the elections. Now, the question I'm asking you is, is uh, Professor Jainan Opokwajiman, out of the field of people that were speculated, um, Dr. Kwabna Dufo, Alex Mode, Kwame Wa, Professor Kwesi Boche, um, Dr. Kospi, whatever. These people, some say, had political ground game gravitas. What is it that Professor Jainan Opokwajiman had? over these other people that makes her the best partner to win an election. You worked with her as a deputy um, education minister. What, what is it that stands her out as, as unique? Hi, good evening, Evans, and good evening to the distinguished panel and all our, our viewers. I mean, let me begin by emphasizing that this is an exciting day because we have made history and I think that the whole country, we should be proud of our democratic credentials, what we are achieving, that we have reached a point where women can step up to the plate. And not just any woman, but a woman who is as competent and even more competent than many of us men. So it's, it's, such, it's such a historic day, it's such an exciting day, the ceiling is being shattered, and it will be shattered finally on the 7th of December 2020. I have no doubt when the good people of this country repose confidence in this ticket. I have known the good professor for a good number of years, working closely with her as Minister for Education. And I can tell you, Evans, that she has amazing work ethic. She gets to the office before 7 a.m. She is. I think we've lost uh, him there. Um, that's, I'll... that's all. Yes, great, great. We have you. We lost your, your audio briefly, but you're back. Go on. So, so I was making the point that she's driven, she's resource oriented, she's a go getter, she is only interested in the outcome. All the effort must produce positive results. And so you can see from the reforms that she led, the conversion of the polytechnics to technical universities, driving down teacher absenteeism from 27% down to 7%, the upgrade of the teacher training institutions to colleges of education, tertiary degree awarding institutions. If you look at the reforms she made with skills development, securing funding from the Africa Development Bank, to construct modern technical institutes across the length and breadth of this country. You see the investment she made in quality education. So the science labs, the ingredients of quality, the TLMs, all of that led to her achieving the best BEC performance rate in the history of this country. And the data, the WIAC data is there. It bears us out. The WASI results for four consecutive years Ghana was a judge, the best performing Wasi nation. It wasn't Nigeria, it wasn't Sierra Leone, it wasn't Liberia. So this is a lady who gets the job done. And I believe that in coming to this decision, President Mahama was looking at not just a woman, and amongst the men, and among those, you know the NDC has never been short on talent, on exceptional leadership qualities. She settled on her, I believe, because of her impeccable track record, the fact that she, and she did that 
in the education sector, the track record is there. Indeed, there are some of the interventions that mm. other countries adopted that came to Kenya, for example, adopted the secondary education improvement project. And the World Bank has documented this very, very, very conspicuously in a lot of literature. You look at her appointment to the UNESCO Council. I mean, this is this 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 is one of those talents that when she is part of your team, you can be rest assured that success will be delivered. So I, I believe that it's more to do with her ask you this, and, and her ability to get the results. Good. So talk about our results. The MPP has pointed out today at their press conference that this, when she was the education minister and you were her deputy, she controversially scrapped the teacher trainee allowances in spite of the agitations on the teacher trainees. A subject we became a, a, a campaign promise, and Nanado won the elections with one of as using one of those as a promise. That clearly tells you that people agreed that that decision that your former boss, who's currently your running mate, took was a wrong one. What's your reaction to that? This is a lady who is visionary who has gravitas, who understands education. At the time she took over the realms of the education ministry, the colleges of education were virtual. Well, I think, I think we've lost him there again. Uh, we'll try and get a stable connection to him. Also joining us is uh, uh, John Bodu of the MPP. I'll bring him shortly, and I'll, I'll go back and, and hear the thoughts of, um, of, of Alex Ebefia. Uh, on, on this. But I want to bring in Professor uh, Sarah Dakwa here uh, very briefly on, 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 the, on the woman, the academic. And she worked with her at the University of Cape Coast. Uh, Prof Dakwa, again, thank you and being, for being patient uh, with me. Um, so for those of us who know next to nothing about her leadership and uh, prof, prof as an academic, you worked with her um, at the University of Cape Coast. What was she like? What, what, as, as, as an academic? Yes, um, thank you, Evans. And um, I will say that Prof. Nana Jenopuku Ajeman taught me as a student. Um, she was my lecturer. And even at that time, you know, she was a um, great inspiration. To, the, to all the students and even to the females. And then I happened to finish and then I joined the University of Cape Coast. And she's, she's ever been a mentor to me. She's one person you can approach easily. She's one person who encourages, who motivates. I remember when she became a full professor, you know, I used to worry, I said, big sister, how did you make it? And she said, Sarah, you can do it. You just need to stay focused. And in learning that she was the first female full professor at the University of Cape Coast, and her telling you that you can do it, you can make it, Sarah, stay focused, work hard. And she does that to almost all the females, provided you are ready to get close to her and work with her. She will encourage you. And that's one great thing I learned about her, that she's, she's willing to work with anyone She's willing to encourage, she motivates, and she, she helps. You can even write a piece and say, big sister, can you, you know, look at this for me? And I think that is, that is um, an exceptional characteristic of, I mean, prof, mm. that I have really you know, benefited. And um, I know a lot of the females in the University of Cape Coast will so, so uh, you, you're saying that she, she can also motivate others beyond herself, challenge them and motivate them to, to see the best in themselves? Yes. Okay, that, 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 is, that is a good attribute to have in, in, in yes. politics. But, but I need to ask you this. Knowing her as an academic, where she really made her name before she became a minister, in a game of politics, some have said because she's a woman, that it, this is going to come under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of attacks from all quarters. How strong is she in, in the face of such, in the face of adversity? Did you, did you see enough of her to, 
to get you convinced that this is a strong woman who can deal with any adversity, regardless of where that adversity is coming from, knowing how our Ghana politics is. Give me a sense of who she is within the context of what I'm just painting. Yes, I, I know Prof is a very strong woman. You know, when, when it comes to politics on campus, I always say that um, in Ghana, we all, always preach that, oh, encourage women. We want women to take leadership positions, et cetera. But even when it comes to campus politics, it's not friendly for women at mm. all. Mm. When it comes to leadership positions, elections, you see that the men always prefer to vote for the woman. But... Nana, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajeman is one person who has stood through the test of times. You know, she's been through a lot of elections. She's won, she served a lot of leadership, you know, dean of graduate students. She's been HOD. She's been, she even uh, contested for the pro vice chancellor one time. She didn't get, but she ended up becoming a vice chancellor. So I know she's a very strong woman who will be able to stand the test of times. If I tell you, that if somebody told you that, oh, Prof um, Nana Pukwajiman, she's, she's too soft for Ghana's, Ghana, Ghana, Ghanaian politics, what would you say to the person? Um, I'll say the Prof I know is not that soft. Mm. No, that's what I'll say. The Prof I know is not that soft. She's mm. a strong world woman. What, what would you say um, her greatest attributes will be now to the John Mahama? Now to the to the NDC and and if you went to the to the country, something that um, you've seen in her that I guess will be her strongest selling proposition, going into major elections, knowing who she, she was. Um, you know when we were, you were introducing the other people, you said I was purely for academic. Yes. Um, and so I can share that experience. Yes, yes. Share Nana, that experience. Professor Nana Okwajiman is one person who. You know, we'll always send a, an email or something saying, hey, Sarah, there's this proposal here. There's this grant here. Let's put this together. I'm organizing these people. Let's write for this grant. Mm. You know, I know he's very strong in that, you know, trying to raise funding, money for projects, et cetera. Purely, I mean, from what I've learned from her in academia and on the University of Cape Coast campus. Okay, so let me ask you the question that the elephant in the room. Um, how do you feel, you're a woman yourself, and I'm sure you've uh, had your own challenges uh, breaking the glass ceiling where you are. She is, she's made history as the yes. first, first uh, female running mate of a major political party, one of the two parties that have ruled us since the Fourth Republican Constitution. As a woman, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, is it a big deal? To, to use her femininity as a trump card? Oh, um, I'll say that um, I, am, I am encouraged. You know, I'm encouraged because most of the time I, I tell my colleagues and friends that, you know what, everywhere in Ghana we talk about promoting women, but I don't see that happening a lot. You know, it's, it's something that's everywhere in Ghana. Oh, yes, for feminine, this, let's do this. Women, this gender. But when it comes to the reality on the ground, they never promote women. Mm. So I'm excited that at least this has happened. And I'm happy for my mentor. I'm going to ask a general question. Um, with, does the fact that a, a political party have a woman as a running mate or in a key position... Does it influence the decision, the choice as a woman you make uh, if you enter a polling booth, for example, in any way? I mean, just speaking broadly as a woman, um, does it influence the decision you make? Does it matter to you in making a decision? Um, it's, 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 it's very, in fact, when you say as a woman yes. and speaking for women. Yes. Um, I wouldn't like to make any comment for now okay. on that. Okay, um, fa fair enough, Prof. Um, that's Prof. Sarah uh, Dakar, Professor of Food Science, University of Cape Coast. Uh, I'm grateful that you could join me with that. Um, so we just had there somebody who worked with her uh, in, the, in the university say to us, and Prof. say to us, that she's strong. She played her game, politics on campus. 
and, and she, she fought hard, and it wasn't kind to her, but she persisted. But I'll put it to you that campus politics and rising to become a vice chancellor, some may say, is far different from um, being a Iranian man and, and seeking to become the vice president of this great republic. What would you say to that? Yeah. I mean, yes, yeah, certainly uh, I will agree with you that national politics, the heli belly of national politics is more um, tortuous. It's, it's, it, it can be uh, run cross. And uh, often many women have stayed away. It takes a certain courage, a certain fortitude to step up. And so we must commend the, the, the good old professor. But the point must be made that um, increasingly, and not only in Ghana, all over the world, people want the politics of substance, the politics of ideas. This uh, heated politics without light of name calling, attacks, vituperations, you know, mud slinging, throwing mud at the opponent. That's not the kind of politics a lot of our people are interested in anymore. It's so old fashioned, and, and, and we need to learn to reform and engage in the kind of politics that will allow for many more of the Professor Nana Jinopoku Ajimans to, to be comfortable with. And I'm sure that that is what she will do. She will really lift the bar, she will improve the discourse, and she will sanitize the political realm. I mean, let's be honest. If you look at the fact that this is a woman who uh, was not deterred, yes, the professor at UCC has talked about her challenges, but she was not deterred. She competed with about four people uh, for the position of vice chancellor. And she defeated all those four uh, distinguished professors, all those gentlemen. Mm -hmm. She was the only lady, and she prevailed. So it tells you that, I mean, she has it in her. She can take on the, the, the establishment, the, if you like, the very chauvinistic society that, I mean, the whole world has become, and, 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 and she achieves results. So I, 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 I believe that she will achieve the results. If there is time, I wanted to quickly respond to some of the MPP attacks. Yes, yes. I, 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 just, just hold on, because I'm going to dedicate some time to that, um, So because you can have time to okay. do it. I want to bring in John Boydou. Do you have John Boydou on the line with me? Um, John Boydou is the General Secretary of the MPP. Uh, joins me. Mr. Boydou, thank you for your time here on, on PM Express. Uh, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And I have with me um, Mr. Alessia Befia, who's a deputy campaign manager of the NDC a flag bearer, and also uh, Sami uh, Okujetra Blackwa, who wanted to respond to you. But I wanted to uh, hear from you first. You did a press conference today. My question to you is, um, you, 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 are, you are already, as they say, going to pouring sun in the, in the gary of the NDC. They've appointed their running mate. You've said all the time, appoint a running mate. They have. What's, what's your... What's your problem with, with them having a running mate? Are you are you worried? You, it seems like you're scared I, I, that they have. I don't think I don't think that we have a problem. I first of all have to commend and congratulate the NDC for uh, following our footsteps of, of in the midst of COVID, also organizing a political activity. Uh, I think that uh, over the period they've been complaining that because of COVID they are unable to appoint or nominate, depending on what their constitution says, uh, they are they are running it, and they've been able to raise uh, the odds and be able to appoint who they are running it. Uh, it's, 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 it's good because uh, elections is not. An event, it's a process, and there are a lot of processes that we go through to the masters and the Ghanaian people cast their votes to determine who represents them in parliament and also represents them in Jubilee. Yeah, but, but this particular <laughs> running mate scares you, does it not? It scares you greatly. That's what this particular running mate that's what that it scares you that this is the ticket that will defeat the MPP. <laughs> You know, you see, the, the kind of the questions that you ask is, is those decisions that will lead to people trying to even assess who she is and bring her achievements when she was given the opportunity to be a minister into question. I think that uh, she needs some honeymoon 
uh, but I think that uh, our team also uh, projected and realized that those are the kind of questions that will be asked, and uh, it's important that we look at it. When we are looking at, uh, it's, it's very difficult sometimes looking at human beings as man or uh, female, male or female, because there are males that are more female or feminine in attitude and action and support of uh, feminine is stronger than, than, than female. There are females that their masculine attitude is, is stronger than, than, than some females. You understand? So that alone is not enough because we've had in this country uh, running late of political uh, in 1992, as far back as 1992. We have somebody like Professor Na Afale Takifiu who nobody can doubt her academic background and her contribution towards academia and all that. Uh, partnering with Kobna Dakon in 1992. Uh, I think that the results show that it is not just about a woman. Uh, we have Petra Medaski partnering with Ganlati in 2000. We have Patricia Meku. We had Iva Loko, you remember. Uh, partnering with uh, Park Wee Sin in 2012. Uh, we had Ellen um, Matevi, who partnered with Hassan Ayaga. So it is, it, is, it is nothing new. It depends on the person's contribution and support for a particular constituency in question. Uh, if you are talking about feminine support, I don't think that uh, the NDC running is somebody that is known who have fingers strong uh, matters of feminism in this country. But, 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 what about, but what about the record she, she no, comes... Not just about any conclusion. Yes, I mean, uh, 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 on, on, about just, just because of time, but what about... about... People who support, who support mm. feminism in this country. There's no way anybody, if you are mentioning thousand names in this country, can mention her. So if we are putting forward the argument, then these are the kind of things that will come. Uh, just clarify for me. Uh, are you trying to suggest are you trying to suggest that your your candidate, the president, when it comes to actions that support uh, the feminine agenda, she's more feminine in that sense than Jaina no Pukwajuma? To a large extent, to a large, not not uh, as for Nana Pukwajuma, there's no record to make it. There's no record. It says it's zero. Yeah, yeah, it's zero. That one is zero. Uh, for to a large extent, if you have a president that believes that each and every Ghanaian should be given the opportunity to enjoy free secondary education, knowing very well that the, the female population is higher in terms of percentages two male population, then you clearly will see. Apart from the fact that he's been appointed UN uh, ambassador on gender and a lot of things that he has done, this singular effort where you had uh, an education minister and the person of a woman, uh, as, as we are discussing, who vehemently kicked against giving opportunity to the largest section of our population who are women, to be educated. Well, what are you and talking you know, about specifically here? I'm talking about the free SHS, for instance. You say she yeah, kicked Madame. against it. She and her party strongly kicked against free SHS. But, 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 but under her leadership, <laughs> Mr. Jomburu, under her leadership, the NDC started progressively free. They actually started giving free um, education to the boarding houses before you even and, came and expanded and you can it. Compare, you can compare this with those pragmatic and bold decision of ensuring that all students at the senior secondary level enjoy free education. Can you compare that with that? You can. Uh, yes. And so, yes, she may have started something that's okay, that is good, that is positive, that we all support. But you can compare that with the sporadic and, 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 and courageous decision by His Excellency Nanadu mm. Dan to ensure yeah. that all 
return from JSH to HF and joy free education. Okay. That has led to yeah. over, over 300,000. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I want you to give me a three, second. Give me no, a second. Wait, wait. Give me let, a second. Let me conclude, let me conclude so that uh, you can. Very briefly, that if you may. That has led to over 300,000 mm -hmm. class students who, if not because of Nana Kufuado, would have been in, in the house by now. Mm -hmm. And if you are looking at the percentage of females among the 300,000 by our statistics, the females are more. So you can't compare it okay. with. Uh, just, just, uh... let, me, let me bring it up with you, Mr. So you are getting a fair sense of how the NDC is going to fight her and the messaging they will be deploying in doing so in the coming days. One, they say she can't claim to be supporting the female's agenda. It says that place, she's zero. Secondly, they say, well, she didn't support the free SHS that has given so many uh, young women and girls uh, an opportunity to be educated. And then I've also put it to you that they make the point that she scrapped very controversially the um, teacher training allowance. Um, how do you rebut that? Well, Eva, it is clear that the new patriotic party has panicked. I mean, the hurriedly organized press conference today uh, could have been shelved for another day. I mean, it was such a mess. The feedback has been horrible. Uh, when you have Yabu Abiyah Samoa say that uh, President Muhammad does not take Ghanaians seriously for appointing a woman. I mean, you cannot be so misogynistic, so sexist in, in, in this modern era uh, that, than that. And, and that must be condemned by every well-meaning Ghanaian. Now, when uh, Mr. Buedu goes on about the female running mates we have had since 1992, instead of seeking refuge in other political parties, I thought that he would have given us an MPP example. The fact of the matter is that this is the first time that the two political parties that have dominated the Fourth Republic, President Mahama has shown courage. He has shown that he will walk the talk. He will not just pay lip service to the whole issue of opening up the space and allowing women to play the role that they have always played. If you look at the history of the world, the history of our country, and bringing the human race to where we are today. So all plaudits to President Mahama. The NPP and NDC are the two political parties in this republic that stand a realistic chance of winning political power. And so let us not seek to downplay the significance, the history that has been made today by seeking refuge in other political parties. Tell us what your party has done. Now the substance, teacher trainee allowances. Professor Nana Jinopoko Ejiman embarked on reforms. She abolished the quota system, which limited space for more of our young persons to get the opportunity to be admitted and to become teachers. When she abolished the quota system by completing the tertiarization of the colleges of education and putting students on the student loan scheme, Enrollment shot up from 9,000 to 15,400. 9,000 to 15,400. The MS data is clear on this. These are facts. Now, under Professor Nana Jinopoko Ajiman's tenure, all those who graduated were posted automatically to the field to teach. They became dignified workers. They were not compelled to go and write some licensure exams. They were not compelled to go and carry out national service. So the point must be made that the reforms that were carried out at the colleges of education, that's why if you go there now, they miss her era. They wish that we'll return to the Professor Nana Jinopoko Ejima era, where there will no longer be quota system, where there will no longer be a national service for teacher trainee, trainees who have already done their, their, their out segment and have already carried out national service, where there will be no licensure examinations. So these are the facts. And if you look at the fees that were paid at that time, it was low. The feeding grants that was subsidized, paid for, and tied by the government, all these things are no longer in existence. So the reforms that were carried out were in the national interest. Mm. All of those thousands of newly recruited teachers are in the field now 
helping to reduce the trained teacher deficit. Yeah. And so quality education has gone up. And, and, and that's and, why you and realize yet, that yet, during her performance was the best. And yet, Ms. Okuje Tablakwa, she controversially cancelled the, um, the teacher training allowances in spite of the protest from, the, from these teachers. Having there been many policies that during implementation, people have not understood. Many, many policies. I mean, uh, Evans, you are a political scientist. You know that Osajifu uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, for example, uh, was criticized uh, by, 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 by many that he was ahead of his time. Many people did not understand his vision. They could not uh, appreciate the, 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 the importance mm. of how the policies he was formulating and implementing were in the national interest. It was many years after he had left the scene that people began to appreciate where the aha moment happened. Oh, so this was the idea. Now many people, if you go to the colleges of education, you can open your phone lines, you can talk to TAC, you can talk to the, 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 the trainees. They wish for a system where there will no longer be quota system, where school fees will not skyrocket as it is now, where government will pay feeding grant, where you will be posted automatically when you graduate. You will not be asked to go do national service. You will not be asked to do licensure exams. The training, as certified by UCC, had inbuilt your quality assessment where you do not have to go sit for a licensure exams when you have already graduated mm. and be certified as, as a professional teacher. So... We have no regret for those policy reforms. I think that is a matter of lack of understanding. Remember that okay. it was not just scrapping and leaving the students to fend for themselves. The student loan, there was, a, my, there was an upgrade so, of so, this institution to tertiary status, and they I, were benefiting I, 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 I from need, the student loan, which to, we increased, by the way. I need to we take a, a, I need to take a quick break. Great, great points there, of course. I mean, for, for those who... Uh, follow the NDC and have uh, followed her work, but the NPP say those are uh, just excuses. I'm going to take a quick. When I return, I'll bring in um, the deputy uh, campaign manager, Alex Egbefia, on the central question that many are asking about about her. Um, is she in a position to governize the NDC base? Will the grassroots accept her? Is she known to them? Especially now that we are learning that she's only been a member, a card-bearing member of the NDC, only since 2013, just around seven years. Key question to Alex Egbefia when we return. Stay with me. I want PM Express. Mr. Alex Egbefia, to that question, um, Jane Nanopokwajima, we learned today from your party's deputy, General Secretary Peter Obama Otokuno, that she's only been a member of your party since 2013. In fact, once when she was interviewed, when she was appointed, she said she was not a member of the NDC. She subsequently took up the membership. She's been a member for seven years. Is she somebody who is known to your base, the base that you need to galvanize to vote for you in your numbers on December 7? I think that is it the length of time you have been with the party that would determine your commitment to a party or not? We have known of people who have been in the party for years and then they have left the party. We've known of people who have been there for short periods and have done fantastic work for the party. Seven years is a long time to be with, the, uh, political, with a political party. But more importantly, she's coming in and has demonstrated from the time she was a minister. She had joined the party. She's worked through. She's been with us through opposition. And so I don't think it's a, it's a, it's, it's a question that uh, should worry anybody in terms of her commitment towards the party. She has shown absolute commitment towards us. But Mr. Event, Sebefia, when for, forgive me, forgive me to ask. So, so her commitment, you say her commitment to the party is unquestioned. But yes. the, the, the rank and file, the grassroots, the foot soldiers, are they convinced by this? Have they seen her? No, but the, the, the question the trenches? you should be asking is, apart from the rank and file, are the rank and file the only people who vote in Ghana's elections? There are a plethora of people, academia, business, uh, 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 rank and file, foot soldiers, uh, 
a plethora of people vote in our elections. And when you're actually dealing with these issues, you look at everybody who is in the voting chain and make sure that your team together is able to bring all these people on board. The, what would have been the point of bringing somebody who brings a rank and file on board only when your presidential candidate does that already? Your presidential candidate brings on all the rank and file of the party. Mm. And Nana Jane, uh, Professor Nana Jane Ajiman, Opoku Ajiman, is going to bring on some of the rank and file, okay. but she's going to bring on others as well. Yeah. So I don't think that if you look at her choice, you should be thinking of just the rank and file. And I don't think the rank and file actually have a problem with her candidature. Okay. Unless you know something I don't know. Well, Mr. Sagbafia, this is a very interesting conversation that we will have definitely once you formally outdoor her. If you may, when are you formally outdooring her? Very briefly. Oh, we... I don't know the date, but okay. it won't be too long. Too long. Yeah. Okay. Well, once, he's, once she's outdoor, we'll get to hear from me and then we'll have more conversation on this. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. Grateful that you joined me. Enjoy the rest of your evening.